I'm here with Linda Sullivan at the uh, site of the what what fire is it, Linda? Picket, picket the, fire. The picket fire at the the Arboretum State Park just outside of Superior. And I wanted to ask Linda a few questions about the fire. I understand it started uh, roughly about noon yesterday. Yes. Do you have any idea what started it, Linda? Well, it's still under investigation, but uh, we, we do know that it probably was human caused as to the specific cause we were still, it's still unknown at the time. I see. Uh, you're busy putting out hot spots all day today and I guess into tomorrow, right? Yeah, we'll have uh, our firefighters, they'll be working on the perimeter of the fire, uh, working on hot spots and just to, to continue to hold what, uh, what we have and to continue to protect the Arboretum uh, and just, just work on hot spots. Roughly uh, how big an area did the fire cover? We're looking at uh, around 800 or maybe a little bit more than 800 acres. I see. Any structures lost? Uh, we really didn't lose any uh, main structures. I, I believe there was a pump house that was damaged, but other than that, though, there was no structure loss. Okay. I also uh, noticed that APS was up here uh, doing some repair on their lines. Uh, do you know if there was an interruption of power? That I'm not sure of. Uh, I do know that we had some uh, fire underneath the, uh, the main lines that run along the highway here but I'm not sure of what uh, what damage was caused. Okay, well that pretty covers the picket fire, but uh, we're coming into the fire season as everybody that's been around here for a while and knows. Uh, what kind of do's and don'ts should uh, people be aware of? Well, uh, we're very extreme right now as far as the condition of the what we call the fuels out out here, uh, the the light grass, the brush, um, everything's very dry. Uh, didn't, uh, we didn't get the precipitation last uh, this last winter that we needed to actually green up really well, and so everything is very dry. And uh, we just like to caution everybody that's out there visiting the forest to just be aware of this and to be very careful with uh, with the fire, uh, campfires, and, and just traveling throughout the forest. So don't throw that butt out your car window. Make sure your campfire is fully extinguished. And it's probably a good idea to keep the brush trimmed up around your home, right? Definitely. Well, I'll tell you what, Linda, thank you for your time. Thank you. That's After it, speaking Ham with for the Linda Arizona Sullivan Eagle News. of the Forestry Service, I had the opportunity to speak briefly with Wade Hart Hartwakeson of APS, and he explained to me that uh, the reason their trucks were out there working was that although the power was not interrupted during the fire, several of the poles had been fire damaged, one of them to the point where APS felt uh, it would be in good judgment to go ahead and replace that pole. It's hard to see some of the fire damage, but it did jump uh, US-60 in several places. And uh, it covered uh, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 acres. As you can see, these trees and yucca plants close to the entrance of the park were burned quite severely. Uh, Linda Sullivan uh, explained to me that uh, they may recover. It's hard to say uh, exactly if they'll recover at all. Uh, we'll know at a later time when they green up again and start looking beautiful like they did before the fire. That's it. Ernie Ham for the Arizona Eagle News.